Welcome to On Deck. I'm Tyler Redden. I'm sitting here with Mr. Leo Mazzoni. Good morning. Good it's morning. What a beautiful day, huh? It is. It's an honor. <laughs> as long as we get up, it's a beautiful morning. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, I just, I'm just i going to run through a couple questions, but I just want you to tell yeah, me whatever ahead. it is. Now, you had a lot. You had two mentors that really meant the world for you. One of those was Johnny Sane. Yeah, absolutely. You know, do you ever just hear Johnny Sane coming out of your mouth? You know, when you're as a pitching coach, all the time. Oh, Everything that it. came out of my mouth was a lot of it was his stuff, you know. And uh, he took me under his wing when I was a young pitching coach, and he had the most success of any pitching coach in the history of baseball. And I would have been a fool not to pick his brain. Okay, John. And now, could you tell us with the Atlanta Braves the duties of a pitching coach? Well, of course. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, really a pitching coach should stay in the background as much as you can. And uh, all you try to do is to shore up or try to give pitchers ideas or try to help them really with what they're trying to do. Uh, uh, a pitcher, as far as I'm concerned, any pitcher knows more about what he's trying to do than anybody else. Our, our careers took a very similar path, you know, with going to the Having what, Cy Young Award winners and 20 game winners, and uh, and uh, going to the World Series, you know, a few times, so it all worked out pretty good. But I think that he was the smartest individual in pitching I ever met in my life. Well, the other, you know, huge influence on your life, you won 14 straight division titles with him, Bobby Cox. What's it like being in the dugout with with that guy? Well, Bobby, he made it. He he made, he made you want to go to the ballpark every day. He wanted to make you sit in the dugout with him every day. I've, I've told many people this, um, greatest greatest influence on my life with the exception of my father, greatest influence on my life, how to treat people, how, not just bunt, hit and run, steal, and handling pitchers and all that, it was how you treat people and uh, the respect that he had from everybody because he was an honest guy, you know, and Absolutely. they're hard to find anymore. And he, he you know, he, he, he made me understand what it's like to, to, to speak to the ushers and take care of them or to, the underbelly of the... Of the, of, of the workings on in a major league stadium. Also, he loved the minor leagues, too, so. It'll be an 0-2 pitch. And he is at the deep left. He goes back. It is gone. Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Rick Kemp. Rick Kemp. I don't believe it. Remember what I just said, if he hits a home run, that certifies this game as the wackiest, wildest, most improbable game in history. It's a Rick Camp game, July the 4th. 1985. You know, it's five rain delays. It was a joke to keep on playing. Yeah. It, really, it was like a joke when they were playing in Wrigley Field the other day. Absolutely. When it was so cold. Uh, it was a joke, and, you know, Rick hits the home run, then gives, gives it back, you know, so... It was 4 o'clock in the morning. They didn't even want to set off any fireworks. Were you just ready to go home? I was ready to go home like four <laughs> hours before that. And that year in 85, I wasn't really a coach. Yeah. I was just there as a, as a li liaison between Eddie Haas and Johnny Singh because, to be honest with you, they didn't like each other very much. You, know, you, you coached up the big three. I'm definitely going to get to that. But you also had a Hall of Fame third baseman on the team. He's going, he's going to the Hall of Fame this year. We'll season. be there. And Cooperstown, so, 29th. So I bet you can't wait. Well, I'm looking forward to it. We've been going up there for the last four years, so this will be the last <laughs> stop here. What what kind of leader was he in the clubhouse? Well, Chipper was kind of a he, – he led by example. You know, he wasn't a real rah-rah guy. Every once in a while he would say something, and uh, and when he did, it meant something. So he didn't have to be up on the table screaming and hollering. What he, did, he led by example. You know, he played every day. A lot of people don't understand, too, that he sacrificed some gold gloves by moving to left field for the benefit of the club. and. You know, he really could have fought that, yeah. and uh, that showed me something about him right there, about his character. Well, you know, something I always knew about him, he could have left and went to another team for much more money than what the Braves gave him. Right. And he always stayed with, you know, 19 years with one club. Him and Derek Jeter. Yeah, there's not too many people like that anymore. You forget it. It ain't yeah, happening. it's not happening no. anymore. Great guy. Now, he, in his book, I came across a story the other day where he talked about Greg Maddox being a, being a bit of a prankster. Yes. And I have to ask you, what's your best Greg Maddox story? I can't even repeat him. <laughs> well, you want the X-rated version or the no? Let's keep it clean. Let's yeah, right. Clean. No, no, no. He was just an ornery. We'll put it that way. He was ornery. And clubhouse humor is it's it's for a lot of people it's hard to understand. Yeah, I got you. Nothing, nothing real bad, mean. Yeah, but just ornery. 
Well, you know, the big three, you know, two of them went in the Hall of Fame together, and the other one went by himself. The one that went by himself, you know, Greg Maddox was nice when he got to the Braves, and you brought, you, the pitching staff, brought him up to new heights. You brought John, you brought John Smoltz up from a 2-15 and 15 record, I believe it was, yeah. up to a Hall of Fame career. What is it like to see that transformation with him? Well, it was great. Uh, you know, I, I was with him for 17 years when you count the big league time and the minor league time and the instructional league time, so... Uh, you know, we all kind of grew up together, so it was it was very satisfactory. And you know, it got to a point where you got to a point where your goal as a coach was to have pitchers coach themselves. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so therefore, as as the evolution of maturity and experience came about, then they were they were pretty much coaching themselves. I was I was uh, a maintenance guy at the time. First, I was the teacher, the you know the psychologist, all that sort of thing. But then it was just maintenance. Well, let's talk about teaching for a second. You've sort of taken a step outside of baseball, but you're still sort of in it as well. You've been traveling with Tommy John. Right. You know, teaching younger kids, you know, stop using a radar gun. Can you tell me a little bit about that one? Well, I, I, I think the the, 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 uh, the arm injuries that are occurring now in professional baseball is a joke. And uh, we used to base all our all our pitching health on more often with less exertion, and now it's now it's as hard as you can. It's yeah. less often with more exertion. And the radar gun's being pumped up and, and for sensationalism. and Kids are being told for their traveling all-star teams and all that, if they don't hit a certain number on a radar gun, they don't make a team. So what are they going to try to do? They're going to try to freeze that radar And that's how you blow your elbow out. <laughs> Excuse me, that's how you blow your elbow out without even accumulating any innings. Not everybody's in the drawers chat. No, and the other, the other thing is, too, anything you see on TV is just a track five. Absolutely. They've jacked it up. Well, I want to talk about where we're at right now. Daryl Cheney, United Way, Slim Yeah, not too shabby, huh? Pretty coarse, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of water up probably lose a few balls today, yeah, but I don't care. <laughs> Maybe a Bloody Mary will take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I am going to have one, you know. I, I know you are. What, you know, you, you come here for a few years now. What keeps you coming back to it's such well, a great college? People like you, what we're doing right now. <laughs> you know, it's fun. Absolutely. You know, you get out and you play, you enjoy yourself. You see some people that you haven't seen in a while, and you got a great cause for the United Way, so why not? Well, I want to thank you so much. And the last question I ask any former Braves is, would you like to say anything to Braves country itself? We apologize to nobody for only winning one World Series because 14 straight is the, probably the greatest accomplishment you can possibly have as a team in professional sport. It is the greatest you can do.